Welcome, ladies and gents. My name is Peter Sprague. Welcome to episode 23, Live-ish from Sprague Land, the music of Chick Corea. Uh, we just played uh, two songs. One was called My Spanish Heart. That led into Chick's probably most famous tune. Probably he made millions of dollars off this one because everyone has recorded it and played it. It's called Spain. Great tune. Um, great improvisation vehicle. And the guys killed it. How about a hand just for the, the, ba the band, everyone? <laughs> and, Love it. and a nice, a really nice arrangement. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You didn't have to say that. But. Well, it's, it's different than the original, so. That's right. And, and, and I, I kind of, when, when we came, decided to do this concert, I thought, we've got to play Spain, but it would sure be neat to do something different. And, and I think that had some twists and turns that were a little different. Um, Chick has been one of my main influences in music ever since I was a kid. I went to uh, high, high school year, I went to Interlochen School of Music, and I wanted to know about this song of his called What Game Shall We Play Today? And I wrote him. This is back when there was no internet. And somehow I got his address and I wrote him and said, Hey, Chick, could you send me the music? I'd really like to play that song. And, and then I also put in the letter I said, and if you're ever traveling through the Midwest and need a guitar player, I'm your man. And he wrote back, believe it or not, sent the music, and he says, uh, uh, regarding that element, he said, we'll see, we, won't we? That was his phrase, and I kept holding on to that. Years passed, I kept practicing. Uh, my good friend Bob Magnuson uh, had played with Chick. Chick was playing at um, Humphreys. And Bob so graciously introduced me to Chick, and that, that was really cool, and that was sort of a, a first connection with him. Years after that, I did a record for the Xanadu Records where I played a bunch of solo guitar music by Chick Corea. The Xanadu guy, record guy, knew Chick because he had recorded on Skateboard Park with Joe Farrell. That's a record called Skateboard Park. Um, he asked Chick, would he write... Uh, liner notes for that piece. that piece. So that was a way that Chick heard me. He liked what he heard, I guess. He invited me to one of his famous uh, Valentine's Day parties, and I got to play, not with him, but I think it was John Lefwich and I got to play, but in, in these parties were insane. They were held at his castle. He lived in a castle in uh, Griffith Park in L.A., and he had a big concerts every Valentine's Day with Herbie Hancock, John Patitucci, Victor Feldman, Al Jarreau, Wayne Shorter was there. Uh, Chick, of course, played. And I got to play, and man, that was something else. And shortly after that, he hired me to play in his band on and off for around a year. We did some gigs. We played at Disneyland. Is that a picture of Disneyland? Yeah, that's us playing at Disneyland. So it was a great, great moment. And then we have stayed in touch, Chick and I. Um, sorry that he passed away. I saw him just a couple of months before that, and he was in great shape and playing incredible. Great guy. So we're super happy to play his music. Um, uh, he's one of our big inspirations. Let's see. Um, tell us where you are from. We are here at Sprague Studio. And, and a new one, you know, if you've been there, been here before uh, to our live streams, Digital Brian, our tech guy, uh, and our tech revolutionary guy, has worked on his app, and now you don't even have to say from where, when you type in, in in the chat and you say where you're from. He's got an upgraded algorithm, and he'll, maybe he'll... Well, tell us, Brian, what is it? How did you... <laughs> Caught me off guard there, Peter. Yeah, so, so I finally decided that it was a little bit... You know, complex for people uh, to put the from in all the time, and I said, "Can I address this a little bit better?" So now we actually, I switched over to using the Google uh, geocoder, and it seems like it's a little bit more resilient in that regard, so that you can put other things on the line, and it should pick up on on what you're saying. Now, I did notice already this evening. There's one kind of caveat to that. Steph said that one of her relatives was in Venice, and so they placed him over in Venice. But I think. 
probably what she was referring to as Venice up in, uh, up in the Los Angeles area. Oh, yeah. no, so, no, <laughs> no, Steph's, uh, our relatives yeah. are well-traveled. It was Venice. Okay. Oh, okay, no, I, okay. I think that was Trice, Steph. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, that's California. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so we're, we're up, we have an upgraded thing, and it would be fun if you wanted to put that uh, in there. Let me tell you who's in the band. On the drums, Duncan Moore on the drums. Thank you. Hey, Dunk. Yeah. Tell the folks. So, Duncan, if you, I'm looking at him now. He's, he's. You notice how all of us are wearing headphones, and Duncan is not. Why is that, Duncan? Uh, I don't need it. It's, it's this chip I had implanted in my brain. <laughs> Uh, I know what you're thinking before you do, Peter. <laughs> no, um, actually, I went out finally after the first year or so of live streams where, you know, we're all wearing these headphones for many hours. And for drummers, I need headphones that, are, that really isolate the sound. So they're, I was wearing these phones, if you guys remember any from the past shows, they're big and they, they really hug the head real tightly. And after a couple of hours, even after an hour, my ears are killing me. Yeah. yeah. And so I finally just decided I've got to just make the investment in some of the in-ear headphones. Yeah. That are high quality sound. They isolate well and far more comfortable. Plus, yeah. my, ha plus my hair looks so much better. That's, <laughs> that's what I was... I, when I saw that, I thought, no, he didn't really care about the sound. He's just going for that long hair flowing look. You know... Peter, could you provide like a fan? <laughs> so, kind of, I want to, I want to do kind of a, like a Yanni or Kenny G thing. The, oh. the, hair, the hair is actually blowing in the in the wind. That is awesome. That's awesome. Thanks. Well, that's Duncan Moore on the drums, everyone. Um, yeah. My brother Trip, he's playing saxophone, flute, and soprano saxophone, and later he's going to play iwi. So, how about a hand for Trip Spray? And Tripp has been, Tripp's wife called me, because Tripp's birthday was just a little while ago, and she says, Tripp wants a surfboard for, for his birthday. So Tripp, what did you get, or what's your flow with that? I, oh, I haven't got it yet, but um, I've had a foam board, and for a veteran surfer like me, it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> to, to be using the Costco board. So uh, I want something that has actual fiberglass and foam. Okay. <laughs> About 7.6, so, if anybody has one out there, I'll... Yeah, let, it, let us know. Give us a chat. Okay, that's, that's Trip on the saxophone and flute. Mac. Mac is on the bass, and he's right upstairs from us. How about a hand for Mac? All right. Thank you. And Mac, Mac we knew he was going to be right, right on the edge for the, re the rehearsal because he's been doing a show. And, you, and tell, tell the folks what show you've been doing. Yeah, so I'm doing a show down in, at uh, Signet Theater down in Old Town. The show's called La Cage au Fall, which people mm. might know better by the... English name Birdcage was yep. that movie with Robin Williams and uh, we opened this week we had a matinee today and I was just doing the math we only have 35 more performances to go <laughs> <laughs> oh Mac oh, man then thanks for coming here and oh that. yeah it's great you know I play a bunch of written out stuff and then I come here and improvise it's a yeah. it's, it's a good balance good balance that's Mac on the bass and then Danny is playing the piano hand, hand for Danny Green <laughs> And Danny, you're, I know you're a Chick fan. Um, tell, tell us just a little bit about if, if and how Chick has influenced your music. In which oh, ways? Man. Well, uh, yeah, I've been listening to Chick's music for quite some time. And, uh, you know, I love his, you know, him as a player as well as, as a composer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, you know, I write a lot of music and definitely try to take in different things that I like about different composers and Chick's definitely one of them. Um, I, I, I love that he has like all these different um, influences. He has yeah. a lot of Spanish influence, a little br Brazilian, uh, a lot of uh, jazz straight ahead, some chamber stuff. So a lot of cool stuff to dig into. I also, I also love his duo projects. Yeah. Gary yeah. Burton, him and Gary Burton. And yeah, that one and the one with uh, Bela Fleck. Uh huh. Both of those are yes. phenomenal. You know, Chick is really into Bella Bartok. Oh yeah. And so some of his children, some of the the improvisation stuff kind of takes flow with that. But yeah, super good, good, good cat. All right, folks. Well, let's check in with Stephanie. 
my wife Stephanie, and she's monitoring the chat, and we're just going to see if that sound is okay out there in the, the world. Only good things to say, so James McLean said sound and video tip-top. Uh-huh. All right. Well, let's move on. Let's play some more music. Chick wrote... He, 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 we're going to play a song of Chick that he wrote that I think might have been one of the first songs that he recorded. It's called Chick's Song, and, um, or Chick's Tune. It's, it's a piece where he uses the model of this jazz standard called You Stepped Out of a Dream and built his own melody on it. So it's called Chick's Tune. Hope you dig it. All right, Dunk, you got it. Thank you. 
by Chick Corea. That was on a record by Blue Mitchell, a classical record. Hey, we're going to tune in. Peter. With, yes? Gary Schaefer wanted to know if that, if you recorded that on Message Sent on the Wind. Good try, but I recorded that on Musica Del Mar, the record Musica Del Mar. So thanks, Gary, for listening and, and reaching out and getting my lovely wife into the loop with <laughs> the comment. Yeah, Don. But he doesn't win the free CD. No, no. <laughs> That's coming later. <laughs> uh, we're going to tune in with Brian. Brian, what's going on with the map app? Hey, once again, it's looking really good. A lot of people out there. We have our old buddy Shar Dyer come out, dialing it in from Kauai once again. We have a number of different people that are. We have two in Sao Paulo, Brazil this evening. What are their names? Carlos Campos and Daniel Lencino. Nice. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, there's also just another, you know, the Southern California contingent is pretty heavy. Uh, hey, definitely. Just tune in, zoom into the, the 
the Southern California contingent, just to see okay. if there's anyone on our street watching. Okay, <laughs> let's just check this out and see if we can bring that in a little bit closer, a little bit tighter. The uh, There's a lot of interesting people out here. That, well, Southern California is extensive, right? Starting from Altadena on down, down through Oceanside, moving on down in Encinitas. Dale Barber is there. Dale um, Barber. Sandra Mark. We have. Oh, uh, that's uh, that's Steve's wife. Oh, right, right, right. Karen Fisher, Alan Lasnober. That seems yes, to be a new but I know him. He's Jan a scat singer. That uh, excellent. Janine Janine Free Encinitas, I guess is her Love name. It. Yeah. Okay. Robert Bush is there, holding up the flank here again. Douglas Flacker. Okay. And uh, yeah, so a lot of good people, and thank you very much. We have a couple of people, like I said, we have your relatives over in Venice this evening. That's another <laughs> one, too. Hey, and, Brian, is, yeah. is, is the app behaving as, as hoped? It is, it is. Uh, it's, I think it's, it's, it's delivering on the goods here. Thank hey, you Brian? Very much. Yeah. Uh, is there a way you could um, add a few <laughs> things to the app? I'm kind of more curious to know who isn't listening. <laughs> 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 I think that might be better information. Okay, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe possibly. I'll check into that. I'm getting, I'm getting a big list from you tonight. First, I have to buy a hair dryer. Now I got to look into that. this edition. <laughs> yeah, all right. all right. The man with the, the, the infinite, blow dry in, infinite air conditioning. Yeah, uh, Duncan has a great air conditioning out there. All right. Well, thanks, Brian. Glad, that, glad that the app is working. Um, we're going to move on. We're going to do a couple. Two songs by Chick run together. The first one's called Duende, and this runs into a piece of his called Night Streets. Now, it's interesting, I was thinking, what is Duende? And Duende is a humanoid figure of folklore. In Spanish, Duende originated as a contraction of the phrase Duende Casa, effectively, master of the house. As far as I can tell, it's sort of like a gargoyle. It's, it's, somewhat, it's a little sculpture being that watches over your house to keep the robbers away and to keep the good people in. So that's Duende and then uh, this Latin salsa piece that Chick wrote called Night Streets. Here they are. <laughs> Thank you. 
lot of notes packed into that. That's a killing song. That's called Night Streets by Chick Corea. Hey, we play here at the studio. We rehearse and we, I arrange the music, we rehearse and then we do the gig and we play for tips and the good spirit of playing music in this uh, questionable time. But actually so, gigs are starting to come back, but still for, for us, the live streams are really a fun kind of venue for us. So if you feel inspired, there'll be, there's a, a lot of people leave tips in different ways. Um, they do it the fun way where it feels like you're not even in, even spending money is through Venmo and PayPal. It's like it's, it's a game and it's, it's, it's totally a, a good thing for everybody. There's some QR codes. Is that up? Yep, yep. There's uh, QR codes, those are little c codes at the side. If you put your phone up to that, it'll just take all your money and put it into our account. <laughs> uh, thanks so much and we're gonna and, and um, snail mail works as well and at the end of the show that the tip jar will be up so thanks and, and historically it's been working out really well enough to pay for the, the band we get dinner uh, and we have a nice little hang and work on the music and keep developing it hmm we just heard heard some flute that sounded like a song before it. Okay, so listen, we're gonna we have a couple more to do. The next piece is a song that Chick wrote called Samba L.A. And our special guest on this is a gal named Aubrey Johnson. She's a vocalist, and she um, on our last show, one of our shows, recent shows, we did a Lyle Mays, Mays tune, and she sang on it as well. Now she lives in New York City, and she was she. Uh, how it works is I send her the track she records and then we now are going to play with her um, and she's not in the studio now but it'll seem like she is and she's a great singer she has this record called Unraveled that um, Dunk tell us you heard that record right I did I was actually blown away I thought it was just really absolutely beautiful writing and the band was great Really nice. There's a bunch of YouTube stuff on there too. Yeah. Up, up, up with her. Yeah. Super neat gal. Great singer. And um, okay, so we're, let me pull pull together a few things. I have to get her up on screen. Yep, that's working. And there's Aubrey. Whoop. Do you have her, Steve? Yep. Can you see her? So she's getting ready to do Samba L.A. Um, what's up? Is someone's phone going? Brian, talk to me. Okay. Is, are you ready to go, Steve-O? Yes. Okay. Okay, folks, here we go. Samba L.A. <laughs>
Johnson singing, singing with us for you. Beautiful. Well, it's the time uh, in the show where we're going to tune in with Digital Brian. Now, he's our cohort from the desert out in, in um, Palm Springs. He's a tech head and loves music, and he has put together a presentation to give you a little bit of backstory on Chick with some beautiful pictures. So here's Brian, Digital Brian. Okay, Peter. Trying to boil down Chick Corea's career is a pretty difficult process, right? So I had to kind of strike this balance of just have enough material to give people a feel for his accomplishments without overwhelming me, because it's pretty easy to do. Um, so let's kind of move along. Initially, he had 25 wins, Grammys, 67 nominations, which is pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. um, his name is Armando Anthony Correa which is an interesting name. Yeah, born June 12, 41. How did he get the name Chick? That is a good question. <laughs> Do you know? I don't well, know. Well, I think because he was kind of a small kid, and I think that they, that his mom nicknamed him that, and it stuck. That's amazing. Okay, kind of a little bit like Paul Simon. Kind of the same. which way? <laughs> the height. Oh. You know, the tie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he initially started out with Cab Calloway. I don't know if he ever listened to some of Cab Calloway's music, but he, he's a pretty humorous guy, but very good, uh, very good musician. So he started do, uh, with the Calloway dance sets, you know, way, way back in the day in the 60 or so. Then he started moving along. I'm going to kind of focus on some of his collaborations because he just about worked with the who's who and jazz during his entire career. Initially, he started out with Herbie Mann in 65, mm -hmm. doing the initial, you know, some jazz sessions. Cal Chater, again in 66, moving along with Miles Davis. I love this picture because it looks like Miles is about ready to slam his trumpet over his head while he's, <laughs> while he's getting his piano <laughs> put together. Uh, then he worked with Stan Getz in 72, Stanley Clark in 72 as well, Return to Forever. Again, Return to Forever, this time with Al Di Miola in 75. Yep, yep. And uh, Gary Burton. It seems like everybody came across Gary Burton in their jazz career at like one point. Like Pat Metheny did, right? Yeah, exactly. He's just, uh, he was a real seminal figure. And uh, that was in 79. Then with Joe Farrell, I love this picture because it has none other than Bob Magnuson with Chick Corea yeah, on so, his album. So back to my story when I was telling you about uh, how I met Chick and how the record company, that's the same record company that I've recorded for, Xanadu Records, and they uh, recorded that record, Skateboard Park, and they used uh, Magnuson on bass. 
Fantastic. Really great. So that was in 79. Moving along, we had Space Jazz. I love this one. He worked with L. Ron Hubbard. He played, he played keyboards. And L. Ron Hubbard's the leader of Scientology, right? Yeah, I indeed. That. Yeah, so I, I don't know Space if you've ever, yeah, I got to pick that one up at one point. So that was in 82. It was a sonic sci-fi opera. It was what, what it was billed as. Then he, uh, in 86, with Wayne Shorter, mm -hmm. pretty amazing. Then he started getting into the electric band, and that was, you and I saw him play yeah. at the NAMM show at one point in time. And it was incredible. A pretty wild show, yeah. So then, moving along, he did the acoustic band. I guess he took the 180 degree shift from the electric band, went acoustic, and went And he again. still played with, he, you know, that acoustic trio that he played with, they had a ton of energy, too. It was, it was like the electric band, just unplugged, <laughs> but it was still It was still pretty dynamite. Huh? Yeah, great. Then uh, Hubert Laws, mm -hmm. he worked with him, John McLaughlin. He worked with him a couple of different times. They actually, there was a 40-year space between their initial contact and then working again later on in 2008. Worked with Herbie Hancock, Bobby McFerrin, mm -hmm. and I think actually at one point in time, Aubrey did yeah, something with her. Yeah, I would her. have to ask her about that. Yeah, but yeah. It lists that on her website. Did yes. she work with Bobby McFerrin? Then, none <laughs> other than Mr. Sprague himself here uh, with Chick Corea. What year was this about, Peter? 82 or 88 or something was like that. I, I, I'm really bad at it. Actually. Okay. <laughs> it, it was some time year, earlier in my life. Classic time. Okay. And then it, I put that as 83. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. So here's a couple of quotes uh, to, in passing here. He says, you don't have to be Picasso or Rembrandt to create something. The fun of it, the joy of creating, is way high above anything else to do with the art form. Yeah, and he really captured that in his music. It was... It was intellectual, but he, he kept the, the spirit of play alive and well. And, that and is really, correct. Really leaned on that. And then his second quote that I have here is, my mission has always been to bring the joy of creating anywhere I could, and to have done so with all the artists that I admire so dearly, this has been the richness of my life. Mm. And there he was from 41 to 2021. And the other thing that I did, Peter, I want to let you know is, uh, you know, he had so many different albums. I thought, how can I represent this? Here's a timeline of his I whole life. It. So yeah, so here is a June 12, 1941. What you'll notice is there's a big gap here, right? Well, he now, was this, being a human at that he, point. He was being a human, but it's kind of surprising. It was like age 25 or 26 before he laid down his first recording, um, which one would say, hey, that's late in the career, but not necessarily so when you have to, at the caliber that he was playing at. He had to d yeah. uh, definitely get his tools going. But then you can see after that he, he starts really gearing up and mm -hmm. there is a lot of albums that he puts through. And I just want to kind of swing by here just to give you a feel for this. That, you know, he just, it went on and on and on <laughs> and <laughs> on. And, and he did a number of interesting things. But I think you had a couple way back in the beginning that you well, were talking the about. one called Light as a Feather. Was okay. A real and high point. Light and, uh, and, I, and the cover of it, man, the cover of it. That, that's the only reason I bought the album. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that cover, man. Yeah, yeah. That is so, those are my favorite colors right there. Pretty and excellent. There, and it looked like a good surf, too, Peter. Yeah, I, know. I, th that's, I think that's really yeah. what we're talking about. And then about. there's another one called Light as a Feather. That was called uh, Return to Forever, but there's okay. one called Light as a Feather. Do you have that? And I'm trying to look for that one. We have, it's small. We have a <laughs> lot. Okay. Yeah. No, you'll never find I'll it. I'll never find it. Okay. But anyway, I just wanted to give you a feel for the, the depth and breadth and the, the, mm -hmm. the, in parting two. These are the albums that were formally recorded, but there is another equal size graph that has just all of the different albums he played on other, other people's albums as well. Right. And so there you go. That kind of gives you a feel for pretty prolific. Yeah. And that's it. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Take Good care. Good work. Good yep. work. Yes, if you ever need to know about something, send a note to me and I'll get it to Brian. It doesn't matter what the subject is. <laughs> he'll, he'll take care of it. And, um, he's going to be teaching a, Peter, Yeah. he's going to be teaching a jazz musicology course at Berkeley School of Music next semester. So. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. That's Digital Brian. Thanks. We're going to do a couple more songs. This is a medley of sorts. He, Chick wrote... 20 children's songs, he calls them. Songs that a normal child could never play, only genius kids could play. <laughs> and we're going to play ch uh, children's song number three into one of his pieces called El Bozo.
Everyone set in place? Ready here. One, two, three. One, two, three.
<laughs> That's El Bozo. El Bozo, Chikaria. Who is El Bozo? Who is El Bozo? I don't know. I, I should have looked it up in, um, in Google uh, or Wikipedia because that's where I found about Duende, but El, I, I don't know. Maybe. It means the clown, yeah. Yeah. All right. We're nearing the end of the show. We have one more piece, but before that we start that, let's. Did we ever tune into st with Stephanie? Sorry. That's okay. I uh, have a few things to say. Um, just want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. Uh, thanks so much for your support. It's um, it's the way that we can keep going, and the musicians get to play, and everyone gets to listen to this incredible music. It's just. It doesn't get better than this, I don't think. <laughs> it's so great. That's nice. And we have a lot of comments, um, aside from the incredible music, about the camera work. So that's kind of, yeah, yeah hey. that's. Yeah, that's Steve Grant on yeah. the camera work. And the, and the look of the um, shots, too. And it's been fun. It's Peter, Steve, and I putting our heads together to, you know, try and improve it each time. But have to add a fourth uh, Thing, which is the steady shipment of new equipment, <laughs> 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 cameras, etc. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's really some nice comments. Uh, Paul uh, said he used to listen to you at Czech, from Czech Steakhouse, at Czech Steakhouse. Robert Bush used to hear you play these songs at Alario's. Anyway, it's just kind of nice to hear what everyone is saying here. Nice. Yeah. And when you say Paul, is that Paul Fleck? Uh, no. Who is it? Paul Canto, maybe? I'm yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't write the last thing, name down. Okay. Yeah. Well, nice. Mm -hmm. and, and Steph, just let me ask you this. What, what, what is your observation of the steady flow of gear coming in in Amazon boxes? Well. Is it a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a, it, it makes these shows look good. It right? makes the shows look good. Yeah, it makes me feel uh, It makes the bank like I, account go down a little bit. Yeah, so. it makes me feel like I'm going to keep working for a while. <laughs> I, I, I do know one thing. I know that, uh, that Peter has been granted an honorary seat in, the, in Jeff Bezos' next flight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. First jazz musician in space. That's right. Oh, that's good, Duncan. Hey, we're going to give away a CD. We, uh, the winner is going to get the Space Between Two Thoughts CD. And it's a, a recording that we did with Dance of the Universe. That was the name of our band back in the day. Uh, the third song on that album is called The Elf, and it's a piece that I wrote for Chick Corea because he's sort of elf-like the way he plays, but also his spirit is sort of uh, like that. Um, so we're going to tune in with Brian. He's got a question that if you answer correctly, then you, and, and then you, by answering correctly, you have to type it into the chat and be, he's really strict. I have to let you know that it has to be perfect wording, probably spelled right, capitalized right. I'm not sure how far he's going to go. <laughs> Nevertheless, he, turn it on to Brian. Okay, yeah. okay. You know, a couple of people, uh, uh, kind of a lead in here, a couple of people are talking about what is Bozo. Well, this, this CD was called Children's Songs, right? And uh, yeah. a couple of people referenced there was Bozo the Clown, and he actually broadcast out of Chicago at that time. So he covered most of the Midwest. <laughs> now, I, Bozo the Clown or Chick Corea? No, no, <laughs> no Bo Bo <laughs> Bozo the Clown. I, I, it was Bozo the Clown. I was just I was looking back to that lesson. Okay, now we're going to move into the quiz. <laughs> So here it is. All right, it's quiz time again, people, and we have a good question this week. Okay, so Chick did sideman recording work with the trumpeter Blue Mitchell and flutist Herbie Mann and saxophonist Stan Getz, and we know all these three people, right? So what's the name of Chick's 1966 debut album as band leader? And here you can see I kind of conveniently blotted it out so you can't read, but I, we're giving you the hint in terms of what the album cover looks like. That's it, and, uh, and we'll we'll come back after this last song, and we'll figure out who. So, <laughs> folks, spell it right. If you, <laughs> all right, the last song is a piece of Chicks on one of his more kind of current records. It's a piece called Tap Step, and it's sort of got a bebop lick, but with this bridge that's sort of goth or something, jazz goth. <laughs> Mac, you ever heard of jazz goth? Uh, I have now. <laughs> This is called Tap Step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
big sharp.
the CD. Okay, bring me back up there, Steve. Okay. Okay, again, the question, you see it here. 
All right, and let's take a look. You know, first I was looking in the chat. Some interesting things tonight again, Peter. Well, first well, of all, keep it you know, keep it simple, Brian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't realize Linda Carter is on the chat tonight. I, I guess that whole you know Wonder Woman gig thing is done that she's tuning in. But that you know, she didn't get the right answer though. I have to say that. There's a couple others, Rob Shotland. Again, I had to kind of go for specifics here in terms of where the caps were because that's, a, that's the only legitimate way this can be won. But people these days so look, don't capitalize. <laughs> so, so, so looking into that, sure enough, it was Conrad Malinowski that won. The Good. First guy to come and what in. is the answer, by the way? Okay, and the answer is... Tones for Jones Bones. Great title. Now, Gary Schaefer had an interesting uh, contribution there. He said it could have been tone, Tones for June's Gloom. <laughs> now, that's the Southern Cal version, I guess. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, so who's it. the winner? So the winner is Conrad Malinowski. Okay, Conrad, gra congratulations. What you do is you send me an email with your address, and it's easy to get a hold of me on my website, uh, petersprague.com. And there's a place there called The Loop, and that's where you can loop back to me. So send me your address, and we'll send you the CD. Congratulations. And it's a great record, by, by the way, that Tones for Jones Bones. Uh, okay, so checking in with the Chatmeister one more time, Steph. Closing remarks? Just thanks again, everybody. These, these comments are just great. So when the musicians go back and listen, they'll read them, and I'm sure they'll have a great time in uh, listening, I mean, well, reading. And then I just want to say hi to Bill and Ju uh, Judy Mays. Oh, Bill Mays, yeah. Bill and Judy. All oh, right, good, good, good friends from the East Coast. Hey, Peter, yes. can I say a couple things? Sure, Steve. I just want to remind people, I don't know how many people realize that uh, in addition to woodshedding, practicing on their own, each of these musicians, they put in a four-hour rehearsal on Friday, another two or three hours today. These guys have a lot of time, not to mention their professional hands. expertise. So <laughs> <laughs> tip well and tip often. How nice, Steve. Well, let me tell you who's all, who's all here. Uh, we have Brian, Digital Brian. How about a hand for him? Yeah. Brian's son, Jacob, who works for Apple Computer, is here just scouting us out, thinking and considering giving us an a, a endorsement, maybe. <laughs> Jacob Baltazar. That's my wife, Stephanie, on Chatmeister, Asian, Chatmeister, Asian, Chatmeister. <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie. You heard from Steve Grant. He's pushing the tip jar. Steve Grant on, on uh, switching. In the band, we have Trip Sprague playing saxophone and flute. We have Danny Green on the piano. Up in the office, Mac is doing some spreadsheets between bass lines. Mac, Mac Layton on the bass. Out in the drum room, that's Duncan Moore playing the drums. Thank you, my name is Peter Sprague. Again, we'll, we'll leave the tip jar open. Uh, the information, if you want to chime in on that, we sure appreciate it. It was a hoot playing the chick music. We miss him dearly. What a great guy and great co contribution he made to jazz music. May his spirit live on. So that's the show tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time. Oh, yeah, we're going to schedule a, a live stream down the way. We're going to try to do the one for Nepali Coast that we, we had scheduled for uh, the pandemic, when the pandemic was at its height. And uh, we, we postponed it, so we're going to try to do that. So stay put, stay tuned, keep the sky in your head. All the very best. Thank you so much.